This week on The Wire, labour policy to cost $32 billion, ownership matters more than ever, and borrowers tipped to reject Big Four. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to the week in real estate for March the 7th. I uh, hope everyone's had a great week. Now, uh, of course, we love to see your interaction with these posts. So please comment, question, like, love, angry. Uh, any of the questions that you get asked today, we'll, uh, we'll handle in our Just Ask Tim video series that I normally do on a Monday or Tuesday each week. Uh, and of course, we love to see you guys sharing this with your friends and family so they can benefit from this valuable information. But let's get into the top stories happening from the week in real estate this week. So labor policy to cost $32 billion. So proposals to limit negative gearing and gap capital gains tax concession. So you've probably heard a lot about this. Will cost the Labor government $32 billion over 10 years. And this is according to new research and modeling that was done by the Property Investment Professionals of Australia. So they found that the Labor policies will drive investors out of the market and leave a gaping hole in government coffers. Obviously, property investors already pay considerable amounts of tax, whether it comes onto the local, state, and federal level. Uh, PIPA Chairman Peter Kozoulis says the research shows that Labor's assertion that their policy would save $32 billion over a decade is a flight of fancy uh, when it's actually set to lose that amount because of drastically fewer investors in the market. Not only that, investors already pay almost four times in capital gains tax than what they receive in negative gearing benefits over a 10-year period. So the government is already ahead financially. The modelling found that Labor government could lose between $10 billion and $32 billion over 10 years, plus fewer investment properties would drive up rents and hinder first home buyers from further entering the market. I mean, look, just uh, my two cents on this particular issue, one of the things that just blows my mind and it's something that doesn't really get talked about is that Labor proposed limiting negative gearing to make housing more affordable. They proposed limiting ne negative gearing so that they could make housing cheaper. Okay. Now, one of the things is Labor continued to deny that it's actually going to drop house prices. So if it's not going to drop house prices, What's the point? Of course, the second part is, is even if it was gonna drop house prices, do you think that's a economically responsible policy to put in place? Of course, negative gearing will still be available on new properties under Labor's policy, but what's gonna provide all the rental accommodation when it comes to inner city and middle ring areas? So if you're someone who rents, um, there's gonna be a lot less supply of those homes on the market, which of course is gonna drive up rent. So major concern for people there. Secondly, uh, ownership matters more than ever. So eight out of 10 survey respondents believe Australians should be able to own their own home and that housing affordability is actually one of the top three concerns. The Housing Industry Association says that the survey confirms that the great Australian dream is still embedded in the psyche of Australians. The research found that 92% of renters aspire to own their own home, but less than half of them think they'll ever be able to achieve it. Coming back obviously with the policy uh, with regards to labor and negative gearing, the real issue is actually housing affordability is at low, really low levels, particularly if you look over the past decade and even over the past 25 years. Um, so that's the percentage of someone's income that is taken up by their mortgage at low levels. Really the issue with housing affordability is people being able to put together the deposit and all those government taxes, things like stamp duty, be able to get into the market. That's the real barrier and that's something that we really need to deal with, as well as is there's a real lack of affordable housing in terms of, you know, you look at um, heavily populated cities around the world, you know, they have things like micro, micro mini apartments, you know, a lot of one bedroom, a lot more affordable housing. Of course, the biggest problem is when it comes to increasing the density of housing in Australia is no one wants that to happen in their own back garden. Um, so Australians see that government has a role to play in assisting first home buyers address the biggest barrier, which is the initial deposit. And that's what uh, the HIA chief economist, uh, Tim Reardon said. This is because they see that home ownership is important to achieving financial stability in retirement. This makes housing affordability a top three issue to Australians, that is after the cost of living and health and aging. And that's ahead of immigration and the environment. 75% feel it's more difficult to buy a home now than 10 years ago. And with the election imminent, 71% uh, believe governments have an important role in helping Australians achieve their dream. Now more than ever, home ownership matters. On to our third story, our third top story for the week, and that is borrowers tipped to reject the big four. So there's a lot of fallout coming from the Banking Royal Commission. Home lending with smaller players will continue to gain momentum as borrowers increasingly turn away from the big four banks. Comparison website Finder says its latest cash rate survey shows growing number of experts believe we'll see loans with the big four decline. So Graham Cook, the insights manager at Finder, says that the impact could be far reaching. 
A third of our experts think that consumers will move away from the big four due to trust issues and stricter lending conditions. Obviously, we shared the story with you last week about how ANZ had realized they'd been way too conservative when approaching lending with their clients and they were opening their books for a lot more investors, which was obviously really good news for our clients. We can expect to see more borrowers turning to smaller lenders, which typically offer lower rates and, uh, uh, sorry, typically offer lower rates to lure new customers. They also tend to have easy to use platforms, which can mean faster application and approval, uh, approvals, lower fees and a more personalized service. Uh, Cook says it's a great time for borrowers to get a good deal. He said that if your rate doesn't have a three in front of it, you could be doing better. That's a really great point. If your rate doesn't have a three in front of it, you definitely wanna to speak to our team. So reach out to us, send us an email, info at Infinite Wealth, or you can make a comment or message us through the Facebook page. Uh, and maybe we can help you out with that. Um, the RBA also confirmed this week that the cash rate was on hold at 1.5%. However, once again, there's a lot of talk about the cash rate possibly dropping once or even twice between now and the end of the year. So that pretty much covers all the top stories happening from the week in real estate for March the 7th. Once again, please comment, uh, question, like, love, angry, and of course, share this valuable information with your friends and family. If you've got any questions, hit us up, guys. We look forward to helping you out, and I look forward to chatting to you later on in the week. Have a great week, guys. See you later.